Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. Now, one of the things that I'm disillusioned with at the moment is that we're living in a mobile first world and yet 99% of the devices look the same. There doesn't seem to be any innovation or anybody doing things differently anymore other than more screen or better camera. Now, one of the things I love about CES every year is we get to see new and exciting products. Now, I recently saw the ZTE Axon M, which has not only won but two screens. Yes, that's right, you heard me right, two screens on a mobile phone. But I managed to catch up with Li Xing today to share his thoughts about CES, IoT, and why he believes that it's time for the smartphone to be transformed. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to CES in Vegas so we can speak with ZTE CEO Li Xing Cheng. <laughs> So a big warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? I'm Li Xin Chen, CEO of ZT Mobile Devices. As probably you know, ZT is a leading global provider for mobile devices, operated in 160 countries worldwide. Currently, ZT is the fourth largest smartphone provider in the United States. Overall, globally, we are number seven in terms of market share, according to uh, Q3 numbers in 2017. You're enjoying so much success yeah. at the moment. It's great to see. It's also great to see that you've returned to CES this year. I mean, can you help anyone listening on their commute to work on a freezing cold morning anywhere in the world uh, listening to us today to just help them visualize the sheer scale of CES? Yeah, today it's a beautiful sunny day. It's the uh, second day of CES 2018. But yesterday, was uh, rainy and cold. I was told, you know, in Las Vegas, normally you only rain five days a year, but we got wild at CES. <laughs> so that was a busy day for me uh, yesterday as the first day. So I had uh, about 12 different meetings with my uh, global customers, you know, from China, US, Europe, Japan, pretty much all over the world. And uh, also be able to some meetings with my key suppliers, partners, and uh, and more important, you know, so we as a traditional now we have always invest, uh, invite ZT fans coming to CETS, and so and the party with us. So I'm actually this year we have about uh, more than 20 fans from all of the US uh, come join us. So I'm looking forward to meet them later today. Fantastic. And I'm glad you said that about meeting the fans and making your supplies there, because one of the reasons I invited you on today was because it seems that if we walk in any store now, it doesn't matter if you're an Apple or an Android fan, the first thing you notice is that all devices look remarkably similar now. And I recently read that you said that it's time for the smartphone to be transformed. I mean, can you expand on this and also what you're doing at ZTE differently? Exactly, Neil. You know, so today's smartphone... Uh, look like they're pretty much the same, you know, if you take uh, off the logo or, you know, brand name on the phone. And uh, so it's kind of sad and that uh, from from my perspective as an active leading player in this industry. So, you know, last decade, actually, to be exactly 11 years ago yesterday, when Steve Jobs launched the first generation iPhone. So you see that he really, truly you know, introduced the new area of uh, smartphone. And since then, you know, that the people are really getting into this full touch and, and very excited about this. But the last few years, I see the innovation stored in our industry. So people are focused on iteration rather than innovation. So uh, improve a little bit, you know, that the 0.1 millimeter bezel-less and, you know, or thickness and uh, I don't think that it really mean a lot, you know, for value for the consumers. At the same time, you know, the the, the price of the smartphone goes up dramatically and uh, go beyond, you know, affordability for most of people in the world. So, as you know, at ZT, we believe, you know, the communication is a fundamental uh, basic needs of the human beings. And when we found it, you know, certainly two years ago, and our founder uh, has a 
vision is that you know we want to provide affordable communication for everyone in the world. So always focus on consumers, the users of our devices, to make sure we create a meaningful innovation and and a great value for them. So with this kind of you know philosophy, we always challenge ourselves what we can do. Of course, you cannot do that without just to focus on what you could add. But it's very important you listen to the consumers. So we did a lot of studies and going to the consumers to our Z community, our fan base. We also have a great partnership with uh, uh, global carriers. You know who has the insights of their uh, uh, user data, so they share with us. So for example, we did a great job with NTT Docmo in Japan, who is the actually carrier who actually invented mobile internet back in the 1990s, uh, that uh, iMode, quite successful and famous around the world. You know, AT&T is a big uh, uh, carrier in the United States, so they had an exclusive deal with uh, Apple, you know, launching the first generation iPhone and has exclusively lasted for a few years. So they also know what is important about innovation for their business. So we have also a big presence in China, uh, we have very close relations with Vodafone since '98. So in Europe, so we work with them, and then we we studied. So we find out actually, for the most consumers, they want more from their phones. Basically, they want a, in the bigger screen, and, and because of the today's network uh, proliferation of wireless broadband over 4G LT network, so most of the traffic on the net mobile network you know, is streaming video. And uh, consumers now is um, want to have uh, multitasking on the devices, and uh, they because of this need they have to to carry multiple devices with them, and uh, you know even laptop or tablet and also one or two phones with them. There is a lot of unmet needs and uh, and uh, uh, for the consumers. So we have studied and we think oh, that is. Uh, area we need focus and uh, but we also realized if we think the same way as most of our peers in the industry uh, we will limit we will, couldn't address those kind of needs so for example you know if we stay with this current form factor that you have a limit how big uh, the screen you can accommodate because you know you cannot hold it it's not portable so that's why we come the idea and uh, with a foldable smartphone and we believe that will be a category we can evolve. And uh, so then we, that's why we announced uh, Axon M uh, last uh, October. And we create this new category. You know, we believe that will come in to evolve and, and in the next uh, uh, decade. And uh, I believe this is a starting a new round of true innovation in our industry and which will be benefit tremendously for the consumers. I'm so glad you mentioned that there because the recent release ZTE Axon M, like you mentioned, really has led the transition in foldable smartphone form factors. It has two displays, but can you help anyone listening visualize how it looks and why you felt it was such an important step forward? I'm holding the Axon M on my hand right now. Yeah. And uh, so, so I wake it up by pressing a little bit about my power button on the left side. And that uh, actually a uh, finger printer. We wake up the phone and lock it. So when you look at that, this uh, exactly a traditional, I call it traditional smartphone. Basically, you know, it's a uh, fully functioned of all the features you have as a, a flagship smartphone. And then you can open it. So which is we have two identical uh, screens. So you have M key uh, actually you know it's just pop up to remind you with other uh, uh, normally keys you have for Android smartphone so we have a spatial uh, M key so then that define another uh, three mode we call it dual screen mode or a B mode we also have a mirror mode or AA mode we also have extended mode so with a dual screen mode so allow you to turn two apps at the same time so imagine live streaming the big game coming up, such as Grammys, and all and tweet about it at the same time without having 
we use another form. So basically, we'll be able to allow you to run two apps simultaneously without interruption. I, I, yeah. love, I was going to say, I love the dual screen uh, concept there because it just opens up and makes you more productive, doesn't it, instantly? Yeah, So you, exactly. in, in theory, you could be watching a show on Netflix and doing your office emails at the same time, right? Exactly. Or you're looking at a calendar and replying to email, come for an appointment, something like that. So it's, it's, it's a very uh, you know convenient for, for the, the multitasking these days. Mirror mode allows the same content to be displayed on the both sides of the phone, which is perfect for sharing uh, a presentation in a small meeting or uh, uh, gaming and uh, uh, playing game with your uh, friends uh, uh, on the table. So uh, it's, it's a great you know, uh, uh, mode for, for the sharing. And then extended mode, which is allow you to view the content in almost a tablet site format because it's a 6.75 inch, and so you can uh, you can browse you know the, the content much easier and uh, and all you can reading a, a, a attachment Excel sheet and those kind of things is a tablet kind of user experience. So basically, uh, XOM is a dual screen. Unlimited potential. What I love about what you just listening to you talk there, what I love about that is that you really seem to you've mentioned the consumers and the community, and you really do seem to care and more importantly listen uh, to what people want because I think more and more people are thinking out there. There's a thousand dollar phone for a brand new phone that looks and feels and does everything that their last phone did. Yeah. So as I said uh, at the very beginning when ZT was founded. And we have a mission to provide affordable communication to everyone in the world. Yeah. So affordability is always the key things in ZT's mind. And uh, now our goal is really make it faster and more productive for people everywhere. To access and use information technology in their lives and uh, all at their work. So, so we have uh, uh, really focused on that. And uh, so our we have mainly two series of products, Axon and Blade. So uh, excellent examples that have introduced the features before any other manufacturers and drive this across all device categories. So we intend to stay ahead of our competitors uh, focusing on what consumer is really thinking and uh, not uh, we think what they need. So focus on consumers and providing the, the features and to them and meaningful innovation for them and at affordable price. That is really what, what we are executing. And also that is why we're winning market share uh, globally. From a technology point of view, it feels that ZTE is also showing great commitment to things like 5G and have a real desire to advance technology as a whole. So I've got to ask, is that a real passion to lead the way with both technology and innovation moving forward with ZTE? Yeah, so ZTE is leading the transition to 5G. And 5G will provide consumers with incredible fast connection and enable an entire new ecosystem of products and services. As you probably know, ZT is an innovator. So during the last three years, ZT is always ranked in the top three among all the companies in any industry uh, in the world in terms of patent applications, according to uh, World Intellectual Property Organization based out of Geneva. And uh, so ZT invests a lot in the, this fundamental technology, and it's a major contributor and participate in the research and international 5G standards. So, and also our pre-5G uh, solutions are widely deployed on a global basis in more than 110 networks in 60 countries uh, by carriers such as SoftBank, Telefonica, Telecom Cell, Hutchison, and of course, China Mobile. So we are, our leadership, you know, in 5G gives us, uh, you know, actionable knowledge in developing the end user uh, devices that can take advantage of this speed. So we are investing heavily and leading the 5G innovation at ZT as we speak right now. I think you said last year that you would fully expect ZTE to be up there with Apple and Samsung. So how long do you think it will be before you compete with them? Or would you actually argue that you already are? I think what I said last year when I was the CEO of ZT USA, and I really mean to that because we are number four 
in the United States uh, right now. So we uh, follow the trend uh, getting the mind share and, and, and market share in the United States. Uh, we are positioned to further grow our business to be number three uh, very soon on this marketplace. So uh, I think uh, from what we are uh, hearing from our carrier partners in the United States, so uh, we are going to, we actually had a great uh, uh, year last year, particularly last uh, quarter uh, 2017. So we expecting we could continue this uh, growth trend in the United States and the other part of the world uh, in 2018. And uh, more important, you know, I see that more and more consumers realize ZT is really providing tremendous value to them and uh, gaining the mind share among them is even more important and, and fitting to our philosophy of put consumers first. So I think uh, as long as we continue to put the consumers at the heart of everything we do, uh, we will pretty much will be able to create a sustainable business growth uh, for the company. As you know, ZT is a public traded company, uh, Hong Kong Stock Exchange. And uh, so we believe that we also can provide a good shareholder value to the uh, everyone. There does seem to be a real backlash against the $1,000 phones now, especially because I think budget handsets, for the most part, can form the same actions as the more expensive models. So I love how you're putting consumers first here. And as part of that, do you think that the budget handset market is a real opportunity for ZTE? So as I said uh, uh, earlier, that uh, affordability is really the key for consumers. Yeah. And uh, different uh, uh, segment uh, of the market also has a definition of uh, affordability and the premium experiences. It doesn't matter it's entry level, middle tier or uh, high tier uh, devices, you you always have to be affordable, uh, meeting to the definition of those categories. So ZT is very active into all those three segments of the uh, cons- uh, smartphone market. So we have Exxon and many focus on the premium, uh, high tier uh, uh, devices, and Blade is more middle tier and and entry level. Uh, our product line, you know, are excellent. Uh, 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 examples uh, introduce those features and before any other competitors uh, and uh, we drive those uh, uh, across all device categories so again we uh, intend to stay ahead of our competitors by focusing on what the consumers is seeking and not only what we think they will need and something else that i love about what you're doing there is you're not just confined to the mobile arena uh, can you tell me a little bit more about what zt is doing in the iot space for example yeah neil you are right so we see that you know in the future it's really all connected world so we forecast around 2020 and probably there will be about what around 150 connections around each of us so you know a few years ago when we define our flagship series, we call it Exxon. You know, Exxon is a nervous center of the human body. That reflects our vision in the future. Among all those connections around you, smartphone will be still the nerve center of all the, uh, in the digital or connected world. So the key commitment is that we want to be enabler at our IoT world, you know, globally. Basically, we want to, uh, you know, driving innovations in connected devices and terminals to networks, applications, and services from different industry verticals. Uh, of course, as, uh, with all this connected, we also emphasize information security. So we are working very closely with our ecosystem partners and focus on development of end-to-end IoT solutions uh, in key areas. So probably you, you noticed yesterday we have announced uh, at CES 2018 here that a joint partnership with Qualcomm yeah. and we are safe so we can bring additional wearable technology and devices to the global market and we are also working very close uh, with partners so we focus on development also for the smart city smart homes industrial internet and uh, connected vehicles so uh, we are uh, having uh, many investment on this you know so uh, in order to enable the whole world to be connected 
2018 sounds like it's going to be an incredibly exciting year for you. So if we do have anyone listening that wants to follow the progress of what you're doing at ZTE, what is the best way to keep them up to speed with all the latest information? And also the best way of contacting a member of your team if they've just got any questions about our conversation today? For the consumers, you know, so we, they can go to our uh, online, to our website, ztdevice.com or ztusa.com. And of course, you know, we have... Uh, uh, all on social media through Facebook or Twitter. Uh, j- just search ZT, you will see a lot of different kind of uh, uh, channels and uh, uh, on global basis or even local in your countries. And also, I do recommend that, you know, uh, your listeners or readers to read it, to visit our Z community forum. That is a place where consumers can provide thoughts and opinions that actually get implemented into our devices as we focus on consumer first. Excellent. Now, before I let you go, when you're not working at CES, do you have time for a little downtime? And is there anything that captures your attention at CES or something that you're looking forward to seeing? Actually, my schedule is back to back. As I said, you know, it's more than 18 hours work, you know. So (laughs) if any opportunity, I want to catch up some sleep. But, you know, in Las Vegas, so you got to play one or two round blackjacks. So that's... uh, (laughs) That's what I'm trying to do. Fantastic. Well, what I love about Axon M is that it looks like any phone I've ever seen, and I mean that in a good way, because we're living in a mobile first world now where all phones look remarkably the same. And it's great to see that ZTE is thinking differently and truly innovating with this technology. But like I said a few moments ago, it would be doing you a disservice if we just talked about the mobile aspects because there's so much more to what you do there, especially with the IoT devices. And possibly most importantly is how you embrace the community aspect of everything that you do. But most of all, a big thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule today to come and speak with us. So thank you. Thank you, Neil. It's my pleasure and honour to be on your podcast with you. I'm looking forward to talking to you soon. I completely agree with Li Xin here. So he's, I just think he's so bang on the money when he says, while the smartphone has not changed much over the last few years, consumer habits have evolved significantly. Because yes, we can all stream HD content, connect via social media and perform a host of other activities. And all this has raised our expectation levels and given us a glimpse of our future. A connected world with no barriers in how we consume content at any moment all at the same time. However, there does seem to be that major disconnect between what this future holds and over a decade old design in smartphones, which essentially limit the ability of consumers, that essentially limit the ability of for consumers to actually do more. And I also think it's great to move away from the whole Android versus Apple debate, which is getting us nowhere. Somebody needs to be brave and bold enough to start doing something different, to regain that excitement that we first saw when the iPhone arrived over 10 years ago. Or as Lishin said that, 11 years ago. So I salute him for rising to that challenge and leading from the front and for taking time out of them incredibly busy days to come and speak to us today. But as always, over to you listening now. What do you think about the state of the smartphone market? And indeed, our conversation today, what excites you about CES this year? And what disappoints you? As always, you can send me a virtual voicemail via my website at techblogwriter.co.uk slash podcast, or you can email me at techblogwriter at outlook.com, or equally tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. But as Cheryl Crow once sang, it's time to leave Las Vegas now and take a breather. But I will return very soon with another great interview from the event here. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.